well. I feel like this is a very long awaited video. I've had, I think, so many questions over the whole period of time where it was transitioning from me being at school, at work, to not being at work and then not posting on social media, not really existing on the internet, to then posting but not really posting, to now where I'm a little bit more active, to this very moment where I'm gonna answer your questions. Gonna spill the tea, I guess, within reason. If you're in teaching, then you'll know. So I posted a video on TikTok where I asked for questions that you wanted to know and I said that I would pick some questions and answer them. I used to film videos like this and it hasn't been like this for a while. It's been years and years and years. So it feels really strange sitting here and actually filming a video that's sitting down and talking at the camera that's a little bit more personal. Then again, I have documented my pregnancy on the internet so far. So if you've not seen those videos, definitely go and check those out. But I'm gonna stop rambling because you have come here to find out why I left teaching and that's what I'm gonna give you. Do you think bullying was normalized in the workplace because this person did? Oh, I feel like this is such a loaded question. I have been in many different schools. I have experienced them on a whole different range of job titles, I guess, from work experience to student at university to teacher training, so trainee teacher, to ECT in their first year, to the ECT in their second year. In every single school I've been to, I would say it gets very catty, it can get very bitchy, and it can feel like even though you're going to that place for work, it's school, and people still get into that mentality of school, really when they should be focusing on I'm an employee, I'm a human being, I'm an adult, and I should act in a certain way, and I should be a role model for children. And if they're demonstrating those behaviors, is it being passed on to the children? That's a whole other thing. I was definitely told it during my training year. You're going into a heavily toxic environment. It's full of women. You have got men in the capacity, like teaching too, but it is predominantly females and girls will be girls. They will be catty. They will say things, they will do things. They will make you feel a certain way. It will happen to you on your own. It will happen to people in groups. You will feel isolated. You will feel pushed out, segregated. And yeah, you will feel bullied at times. And I feel like if you found a school where that doesn't happen, oh my God, like <laughs> that's the best thing ever. But if you're in a school where it is happening, it won't stop. All I'm gonna say, did you finish your ECT years? I finished my first ECT year. Second year of ECT, I didn't finish. I got two full terms under my belt. And then the third term was when I actually went off sick and I was... <sighs> such an annoying noise. Oh, but he's so cute. Anyway, I was signed off with my mental health and my well-being and with stress because your girl was under a lot of stress. I, as much as, I want to word this carefully, as much as other people thought that I was going to fail my second year of ECT, I spoke to the course leader, the person that was in charge of like my area, my region for ECT training. And I basically explained the situation and I said, look, I'm taking a step back from education. I don't want to lose what I've got so far. Is there a way of like pausing it, putting it on hold or just banking what I've got so far? They have paused it for me. So if I want to go back in the next couple of years into education, I think my face says it all, then I can and I can pick up from where I left off and all I would have to do is just one more full term in a school and get that under my belt. But I haven't failed, I just <coughs> didn't complete, complete it. What was the final straw for you? I would say the final straw was when, and it's really sad that it got to this point, was when I was having panic attacks in my classroom before I had even taken my coat off to start the day. At that point, I had to ask myself, was it worth it? Was it worth all the pain I was feeling, all the stress I was going through? I was making myself really sick. My hair was falling out. I just didn't feel like me. I'd lost myself and I was just stood there going, is it worth it? And the final straw would have to be on the day that I actually left and then spoke to the doctors and spoke to trained medical professionals because it was that bad that I had to speak to. I let it get to the point where I shouldn't have let it get to the point. But it was when I realized that it had such a negative impact on 
me and my life to the point where even when I wasn't at work, all I could think about was work. I was having night terrors about my job. It was also starting to have an impact on like home life and my relationship with Jamie. And at that point I was like, no more. I've got to be selfish. I've got to do this for me. I can't just keep turning up and trying to be, I'm here for the children, I'm here for the children. Because that was the only thing that was getting me through. And I was like, you know what, at this point, it's not worth it. There's too much toxicity around me. There's too many toxic people around me. And there was like the very few people that I could find positives within. And I was like, you know what, I need to just pull back from this because it's not great. It's not great at all. And having panic attacks in your classroom, in your place of work, the day I left, I had a humongous panic attack before I even took my coat off. I was stood in my classroom and I just felt, the only way I could describe it was I felt numb and I was just stood there going, I'm on my own. And I have never felt so lonely and sad and stressed out and not good enough. And I was like, I have tried so hard. I've put everything into this. Like I have given it my heart, my soul. I've given it all of my time. I've dedicated everything to it because it was a dream and I wanted it more than anything. And it burnt me out. And it was in that moment when I was having the panic attack, I came out of it. I then managed to get my coat off. And then in that process, I had another one and I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. And I think the final straw is the one that broke me and it took a lot to recover from. And I think that's why I disappeared for so long because I didn't know what to say. I felt like a failure. I didn't know how to acknowledge it. And yeah, it just, it wasn't worth it. And I just wish that I hadn't let it get to that point. Will you ever go back to it? No, 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 no. Never, 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 never. I'm so much more happier not being in it because it's, n I don't have triggers. I don't have, I don't step into places and I don't feel feel a certain way because it brings back memories. I just feel so much better not being in it. And the idea of going back to it, not worth it. Not worth it at all. Life is too short. Focus on the things that you need to focus on. There are so many jobs out there. Don't go back to something that made you feel that bad, that it basically was destroying your life. Like I couldn't, I couldn't put myself back through it. Like I would not wish what I went through on my worst enemy. So I feel like I've touched on this one briefly. Like why did I leave teaching? What were the factors to it? mental health, the impact it was having on me physically, mentally, emotionally. I was just like, yeah, it took its toll on me. Other factors were, I was looking around me and I was just seeing that everyone else was so happy in their jobs that they were doing outside of school. And that I just felt, this is such a negative space. The lack of funding, being ridiculed over doing things the right way. And if you did something in your own way because it was your way of doing it because mm it's your teaching process, being told, no, that's not the right way to do it. Even though there's like no set rules on how a teacher should be, you're encouraged to be your own person, your own individual, your own teacher. And you're not allowed to do that. It's like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. It just wouldn't. Tiny hole, big square would not work. So other factors of it were just life in general. Jamie and I were having conversations about like, we wanted to have children and we'd already had the conversation that I knew that at the end of my ECT, is I was going to take a break from it because I was so stressed out. I was like, I don't want to run the risk of not being able to fall pregnant or falling pregnant and something bad happening because I'm in this toxic environment that is just, it's like a ticking time bomb and I just can't be in it. So we'd already had the conversation about me leaving anyway. And I just guess the academic year that I went through was just, I feel like I block it out because it was that traumatic for me. I just can't, I can't even begin to think about it. And when I start to think about like the beginning of the year and then like, where stuff started to snowball, I wanna cry. And I'm not gonna allow myself to do that because I've moved on from that and I'm in such a better place now that I've shut the chapter. I just don't wanna think about it. I'm just gonna say like a lot of things happened things that I don't want to disclose, things that I don't want to run the risk of talking about for the fear of backlash, not necessarily from you guys, but just a lot. And I just want to make it clear that I'm in such a better place now and leaving was the right thing. I just want to be happy and your girl's happy. Your girl's finally happy. Did I consider doing supply work after I left? Yes, for like 30 seconds and was like, <laughs> why am I thinking about that? Like, no, not gonna happen. I suffer with social anxiety, been diagnosed with that since I was in year 12. And my social anxiety, I hate new things. Like I despise them with a new thing. Like with just, I, just, I can't put myself into a new 
situation. So going to a new situation would, would be horrendous. So doing supply where you go to a new school, you're not necessarily part of the team already, you don't know anyone, you don't know their routines, you don't know this, you don't know that, would just be too many things that would set me off and it just wouldn't be fair on myself. So I did think about supply teaching and I take my hat off to people that do supply teaching. Like supply teaching I think is really rewarding because you get to go to so many other schools, you get to learn so many different things from other schools and seeing so many different teachers all the time. Like it is really rewarding and you get to meet so many lovely children. Like that's just, that would be incredible. But yeah, no, not for me. What did you struggle with the most? I'd say ECT framework in the second year and like the expectations around that, not necessarily, not like on me, but how the education sector views ECTs in their second year. I feel like if you're an ECT, you'll understand what I mean by that. Like, yeah. So like I was doing my job expectations, but it's like everything else that comes around it. Yeah, I would say that. The other thing, and I think the final thing that I would say that I would struggle with the most would be that I had been very open and honest about my mental health. Um, I've always been really open and honest about my mental health. I definitely have posted it on TikTok. I have spoken about it before when I've had a blog. When I had my previous YouTube channel, I was very open about it. Like with other people, I've been very open and honest about it. Um, and it, I think it was just everything that comes with that from other people, just day to lot, like daily life and stuff like that. I think I just struggled with the most. Like I had really good pockets of people that were really supportive and they were like, they could tell when I was struggling and they would go out of their way to support me. And then like, yes, just not everyone can be like that. And that's one of the hard things that I've learned. I'm the type of person where I want to see the good in everybody and teaching's taught me that that's not always the case. Did you have colleague support? So I've actually left teaching with three of the best girls, they know who they are, three of the best girls ever. I adore them. Like I would do anything for them because they're just, <laughs> I just love them. They're amazing, they're amazing. One of which was, I was really fortunate about, she was my TA. Um, and then I ended up like sharing her, but um, I love her. Um, she was amazing. She was one of the reasons, one of the positive things about getting me into that building because she would just make me smile. She would just brighten my day up. And so I had my three girls that I've left teaching with that were really, really supportive. Colleague support. When you're in ECT, there's support put in place. And that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm allowed to say. So that's all I can say on this. I feel like there was a second part to that question. Would more support have made a difference? Um, yeah. I actually don't know how to answer this. I really don't. Because I think, I feel like everything that happened in the year that it did, like personally for me, just like, if you take my life and look at like the last 12 months, so not just work and stuff like that. N no, no. I think everything happens for a reason and I'm a firm believer in that. And I know that the universe puts things in your way, challenges and stuff that you it wants you to overcome and it will give you challenges that you won't overcome and you will find a different avenue because it will push you down a different pathway. And that's what it's done for me. And if anything, it's pushed me down a pathway where I'm so much more happier. I have a work-life balance that exists where I'm not consumed. I have passion for my job again. I have passion for the business that I'm working in. And that's all I'm going to say because I know I've got a question coming up about that. Yeah, I just feel like everything happened because the universe put it into place and it pushed me to do what I'm doing now. And for that, I guess it made it worth it in a way. Wasn't worth all the tears, wasn't worth all the stress, wasn't worth the deterioration in my mental health, but was worth it in the long run. Do you think doing a teaching degree is worth it? Yes and no. Yes, because it's really rewarding. Yes, because um, I always think back to my case studies where you get to explore different schools around the world. I always think back to the skills that it teaches you. It teaches you some incredible things. It teaches you how like a child's mind works, how, how they're gonna develop. And it's nice to be able to put that theory into practice when you see it against like real life children. But then I would also say at the same time, no, because you can do a degree in anything and then still go into teaching. As long as you've got a degree, you can do a year of top up of PGCE and teacher training, etc. So I would say, yes, it's rewarding, but at the same time, do a degree in something that you love. And then it also gives you different avenues afterwards as well, because you can do teaching from it as long as you've got a degree, but you've also got the opportunity to go down different avenues after that as well. That being said, 
I don't regret doing my degree one bit because I've got transferable skills from my degree and from my teaching career that I can transfer into other things. So it's not bad. I would just think if I was gonna do a degree again, I would pick something different and then do my PGCE because it wouldn't have stopped me. How many years did you teach for and did you get much negativity from friends and family when you left? So the first part of the question is, how long were you teaching for? So like I said, I was in my second year of ECT, so officially teaching two. Then I had a teacher training year where I was teaching, I did a skit course, so I was in a school four days a week teaching, and then on the fifth day I would go to training. So three years of officially teaching, but before that I did three years of a uni degree where every single week I was in a school. And then the year before I started my degree, I was also in a school. So I've been in school settings for seven years, officially teaching three, completely teaching with qualification. Two, have I finished my ECT? No, I didn't answer the second part. Second part was, did I get much negativity from friends and family when I left? So when I said to people that um, I was leaving and my, my plan was to make it to the end of the year, get my ECT under my belt and then go, I had a mixed bag. I had people that were really supportive. They were like, yep, yeah, you do you, you know what you need to be doing. I had other people that were like, well, it's a waste, why did you do that? Like, why did you go through all of that pressure of three years of your degree to become a teacher? You've done your teacher training, you've done one year, you've then done, you're gonna have done your second year and then you're just gonna leave, like, what's the point in that? And then I had other people that were like, you set out with your goal to be a teacher, like your childhood dream was to be a teacher. Have you taught children? Yes. Have you made a difference? Yes. Did you get to see children with happy little faces being really excited to see you every day? Yes. Do I miss that? Yes. <laughs> like I, I really miss my children. I really miss my children. And it hurts even more because I wasn't able to say goodbye to them. And I was a constant in their life that basically pff, into thin air. Um, but yeah, I had a mixed bag of positivity, negativity, but on the whole, it was positive. And especially like when they saw my mental health and how bad it actually was. And I like showed the true extent of it. Everyone was like, okay, yeah, I get why you're doing it. And then coming out the other side of it and like looking at it now, everyone's like, best thing you've ever done. Do you think you can still love teaching? Wrong school, wrong time. Do I love teaching? I think teaching is a very rewarding thing. It's very demanding. It takes a lot out of you. The idea, it still blows my mind that as a teacher, you are trusted to put all of your knowledge into a child so that they're building the foundations for life so that they can go on to become doctors, nurses, they can run their own company, they can be creative, they're an artist, they're a police officer, they are able to be, I don't know, like they can do anything that they put their mind to, like giving them the educational skills, but also giving them the life skills. So teaching them that they can read, that they are able to interpret code, that they can work out puzzles, that they can look at the world outside and see, I'm not just stuck in this place. I'm able to go anywhere. I'm able to go anywhere in the world. If I wanna do it, I'm gonna do it. If I put my mind to it, I can do it. If I believe it, I can achieve it. And that was everything that I always used to say to my children is like, if you believe it, you can achieve it. So speak it into existence, be positive, you can do it. And that was the only thing that I really like firmly, firmly, firmly stood by to make sure that the children got that if they put their mind to it, they can achieve it. There's no one standing in their way because they're their own person. They can do what they need to do. And I think it's a really rewarding thing and you can love teaching for that. But I think for me personally, with everything that's happened, it's taken the love out of teaching. And when someone says to me about like a classroom, it fills me with dread. When you say wrong school, wrong time, no, I think that's the right way to answer it. Just think my view towards school has become very negative and I find it really hard to talk about. I'm really hoping that I'm answering the questions in the way that you guys are expecting. And my last question is, what are you doing for work now? So, oh my gosh, I've been so excited to tell you guys about this. So I am operations manager and I do loads of other bits um, for Jamie's 
gym. Jamie owns a gym company called, gym and fitness company, yeah, called um, Phoenix Gyms. We have a gym which is based in Northampton. I do their social media. We have a YouTube channel over there. Um, we have got a podcast and stuff. So there's going to be loads of stuff coming over there that I'm going to be working on. I haven't actually posted anything over there yet because we've not filmed anything yet, but I have a whole content plan, which um, I'm working on with Jamie. So when the first video goes up, I will definitely be announcing it so that everyone sees it, so that people can go and show it some love because it's it's a bit of me on the podcast and YouTube, which is going to be really cool. Um, but yeah, it's just, oh, I love the gym. I feel like it's my third baby because obviously I've got Ozzy, baby and Tommy and the gym. Um, but I just love the brand. I just love everything that it is. And I just love the vision. Like Jamie's got such a creative mind and just the amazing, like innovative ideas that come out of him. I just love being a part of it and making it a reality and like seeing it come to life. Like he will just say like a little random thing and it'll be like, oh my gosh, why have we never thought of that? And then like we go and do it. It's just amazing. And we have so many lovely members that come to our gym as well. It's amazing. We're doing renovations at the end of the year and like beginning of next year. Like we've got so many plans in the work and like it's so fast paced. No day is the same. Oh my God, I just love it. Like I just, it's such a cool job. I still get to be organized. I still get my post-it notes, still get like my fluffy pens and like my colors and everything. But I deal with like health and safety, the social media, I deal with like stock management, I deal with contractors, I deal with like equipment, um, I get to put orders um, through for like new stuff, which is fun because like you're getting to spend money. Yeah, it's just, it's such a cool job. And I was in such a fortunate position that I was able to leave teaching and step foot into Jamie's company, which is just, it's like amazing. And getting to work with Jamie is something that I never want to take for granted because why do I feel like I'm getting emotional about talking about it? Getting to work with Jay, yes, he's my husband and yes, I love him dearly. Just the way his mind works, his ideas and just everything that he does and everything that he believes and he's so passionate. I hope he's not watching this because he's going to take the piss out of me. <laughs> but um, yeah, like he he's just an incredible person to work with and to get to make our dreams a reality has been one of the most rewarding things and stepping foot into that company on the 1st of September was the best thing I have ever done and it's like what is it the 15th of November and I've loved every single day every single day even like the days where stuff has gone wrong and it's been like a bit of a hard day or like you've had a member shout at you or something because they've been frustrated over something even those days I come home and I'm still like pinch me I love my job I love what I get to do I wake up in the morning I'm raring to go I, I just I oh, just I love it and I can't stop talking about it, but I'm gonna stop talking about it because I don't really think people wanna know. <laughs> so yeah, that's all of the questions that I am going to be answering in today's video. Um, I hope that gives you a little bit more of an insight and a little bit more closure for you guys, like closing of the chapter for why I left teaching. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked watching the roller coaster of emotions because I feel like I've had everything in that. If you've not yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button down below, leave a comment, like the video, and I will see you next time.